All right, here we go. Overdrive, off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 2. Brian Hayes, Yo Dog, Jeff O'Neill. Jamie Noodles McLennan. There he is. Wow. There he Birthday is. boy. How wow. old are you today, wow. pal? Um, I'm 41, and I thought of this today. I'm curious how you guys feel about this. Possibly the most useless birthday of all time. <laughs> right? Like 41 is just no – there's nothing to 41. There's you're no buzz young. to it at all. There's not, you're a 500 club, right? You're 81 yeah. and 81, just a complete waste of time. You're not young enough to party. You're not old enough where it's like, hey, you better really take advantage of that. You're, you're just, the Jays' you're 41. birthday. I'm the yeah. Jays. I'm the Jays. I'm, I'm Jeff Fisher when he was a head coach in the NFL. <laughs> I'm eight and eight, nine and seven, seven and nine, forty-one. But it's a just mean a mustache nothing. and looking good. Remember Jeff Fisher? He was a beauty. He loved yeah. hovering around five hundred. Loved it. <laughs> Well, hold on, me. the Jays are streaking now. They are. Two, two in a row. They've got up off the carpet, they did. off the mats, and, you know, yesterday was a nail-biter. Mm-hmm. Today, another, you Good know, Good for them. Game. Listen, for full them. credit, man. They, they, you know, Barrios was great last night. Kikuchi was good today. Um, Kiner Falefa is, you know, we buzz about the offseason being a bit of a disappointment, but Isaiah has yeah. been pretty good. You know, and he had big hits last night, big hits today. Everything's all good. The Jays, you know, back to two games under 500. So right around 41, you know, right around the age of 41. That's what the Jays are right now. Right in the middle of the pack. Not bothering people, you know, not overly contentious, just kind of there, just hovering around and existing. And that's kind of how I feel today at the age of 41. But I appreciate the song. I appreciate the... uh, yeah. You know, all the all the tweets and Instagram comments coming in. It's great. Feeling happy good. Happy birthday. Happy Feeling birthday. Good. You got to have a dinner tonight or maybe a little cake or something like that. You know, yeah, like we'll that's see. what you need. We'll you see. Know? I'll probably get some. I don't know what's coming, to be honest with you. There hasn't yeah, been a I, lot of chatter. So <laughs> I got to ask both. been a lot. I got to ask both of you because I, I know how I am. I don't really accept presents. I don't care about them. I don't like them. Same. You know, don't want I, anything. I just, but, like, I know people. That just uh, grown ass people, 40 years old, 35, 50 years old, like they put a list in like they, they I, here's what I want for Christmas. Here's what I want for my birthday. I'm like, you, you're not eight. Right. Like, you don't we know you're to... talking about your wife. <laughs> just say it. She's, four, say she's it. 40 now. No, there's no list. I, it's actually not her. I, I would like to take a shot at her, but I can't in this scenario. The, you know, she she's actually very humble and, and does not ask for much. I will say that. But there is people within our circle mm-hmm. that, that have a list. And, oh, this person needs this for Christmas. I'm like, there's no kids involved there. Like, just, right. you know, exactly. Like, like how, your... how about just the gratuity of, yeah. hey, how you doing? How's it going? Thinking yeah. of you. Happy birthday. Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, man. When you see like a birthday week, you know, that yeah. that's something that's new. That by again, adults. Doesn't... By adults. By adults. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's birthday week. Going to Miami for a few days and then we're going to come up and we're up in Muskoka for the weekend. It's like, don't you have jobs or yeah. children or something? Like, how are you putting together a birthday week? But uh, that is not the case for me. But I want to thank uh, the NBA for finally supplying us with a big game tonight. About right, the time. NBA Finals oh. has decided to join us. We got to wait 48 more hours until the NHL resumes. But uh, yeah, we got the NBA playoffs going tonight. So that's probably my plan: order some food, hang out, watch some yeah. basketball tonight, and see what did happens. Did you get to tea it today? I did. Yeah, it Uh-oh. was. I almost quit in the front, and then I put it together on the back. It was. Uh, it was oh, no. at forty six thirty eight. That was my round today. Forty six thirty eight. But uh, forty six is a lot of dude. I was chopping there. it, man. It was really, really. You ugly. must have to dig into the jeans with Tux and the boys after that. I I scaled it back because of the back. I put it together. You know the Nassau's. Everything kind of came together. I was actually some plus money today. Everything worked out for me in the end. But it was ugly early. Very ugly early. But, wow. um, yeah, we got the ball game tonight. We got, uh, again, the cup final on Saturday. Ryan Smith will join us in about an hour. We look forward to that. The CFL resumes tonight, too, right? Yeah, Great cup re- replay. We've got uh, Winnipeg, Montreal tonight. So the nail gun will join us. Uh, yeah. Mini camps all around the NFL. You know, there's a lot going on right now. There's and, some buzz. There's yeah. some buzz in the sports world. I, I, I will say, so 
Do we call? Remember Ryan Smith? Didn't he have a nickname? Wasn't it Captain Canada? Captain where they, Canada, because like, at the Worlds every single year. <laughs> they wouldn't make the playoffs. He's literally couldn't wait to get on that plane to get over there. Like yeah. you know, Captain Canada. Like I, I love Schmidt. Like I, I've you know played against him for a million years, and man, was he talk about a guy who literally made a living right in that blue paint, like mm-hmm. just hacking and whacking and taking cross checks and stuff like that. Like he's, would you uh, say the definitive mullet? In hockey? Yes. Like, is he the the face of mullets in hockey? Is it Ryan Smith? He committed to the split feather. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the feather down the middle. Yeah. And, you know. (laughs) He was rocking that in, like, 04, 05. Like, it was, you know, in the 80s, that was the move. But it was was gone by the time Ryan Smith said, I'm doing it and I'm not moving. And I'm guessing he's probably still rocking it to this day. Should I ask him? Still He's committed to it. He was committed to the Gretzky gloves, the Gretzky stick. It was all – that was his move. Didn't he wear the player, helmet? Though. Didn't he wear the Jofa helmet for a yeah. while there, too? No, I don't remember that. No. I'm Maybe telling just you, in practice. I think they in banned practice that thing sure. after the Oilers, man. <laughs> Nobody wore that thing. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm i pretty sure I used to see him skating around. It might have been practice or pregame skates. He had the Gretzky Jofa helmet. was basically a peanut shell with an elastic band. Like, that helmet didn't save anything. Complete waste of time for Gretzky to even (laughs) wear that. You know, like, I don't know what it was proving, what it stopped. You know, you block a shot off that, not doing anything. You get hit from behind, head first, not doing anything. It was uh, was like a luxury item. You know, it was was basically like just something to do. I'll throw the helmet on so that I'm not the only guy. I'll let Mac T be the only guy not wearing a helmet. It was like an accessory, basically. I, 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 Mac Tita, I played with him in St. Louis. I watched him get hit head first into the boards and get up and skate away. Never I, I changed. I couldn't believe it. Yep. Couldn't believe it. Stayed like committed I, to it, man. <laughs> he never, ever put a helmet on. To my knowledge, I don't think I, he ever I did. I think he did, though. I want to say he tried it like maybe like a week or something, and it didn't take. Like that's really what it was. It the didn't helmet take. didn't take. You know, like can you imagine him going like, I, I need my hair flowing. All right. You know what? It, you know how, like, some guys, I'm sure you guys, when you had to wear a visor or mm-hmm. from the cage to a visor, it was a bit weird. And, oh, you probably went from visor to no nothing, correct? As soon like as I, I had the opportunity, I'm like, no, right. a guy was like, so, you want a visor? And I'm like, absolutely not. No but if way, you had no to mouth go guard, back, all of it. Yeah, if you had to go back or if they, they forced you to do something, people are always like, I, I can't breathe. You know, I can't breathe. Like, mm-hmm. Leo Komarov, remember, he didn't like the visor. He had it, like, popped up over his head type of thing. Mac T. Didn't wear a helmet, and I think he wore a helmet for a second. It was like, yeah, it's not comfortable. I don't yeah, like that, it. That you know? is really strange because, yes, wearing a visor, you know, if it if it fogs up, that's what always bothered people was it would fog right. up during play. And then, you know, it would throw you off. If you had to put a cage on, you could see it like your sight of – there, oh yeah, there is the Jofa, but that's not in a game. That, that's like looks, a charity. Game. No, that's, that's a charity in, event for Ryan I think Smith. he. I think that's in. Uh, he he played in like um, a men's league that just outside of Red Deer. I'm trying. I'm drawing a blank on the name. Okay. But he, him and his brother played on that team. And well, that's fine. That's Allen probably Cup. because it was a league rule. You had to wear a helmet or whatever. And he's yeah. like, fine, I'll throw that on. But he never wore that in the National Hockey League. I got We got to ask him. I'm well, telling you. We'll I ask like him. But I'd, I'd be shocked if anyone other than Gretzky. I guess some guys wore the Jofa. Like Tekin yeah, and like wore Curry it. did. All the Oilers Curry did. did. Yeah, I guess yes, a lot yeah. of Charlie Oilers. Huddy strapped one on. <laughs> Charlie Huddy had a stash and a Jofa, man. He loved it. Yeah. Yeah, he did. I, you know what? I, I did a, a show yesterday. I was chatting, and it's interesting. At some point, we'll have to get into it, but the guy was out of Pittsburgh, huge Pittsburgh fan, and he, he tried pitting all-time Pittsburgh roster versus all-time Edmonton Oiler roster. Mm. And it was pretty interesting. Like, yeah. it, you know, he, he, he claimed Pittsburgh was better than Edmonton. And I said, well, you've got the best player in the world in Gretzky, and he almost had a stroke. He was like, no, Lemieux was better than Gretzky. And he said, I can tell you, I've talked to players in the league that mm-hmm. said, so it was a pretty interesting debate. I'm it like, would be, a, that, that is a great, great like, battle between those two teams. I mean, the only other team I can think of that might be able to match would be like the Canadians historically. What's incredible right. about those two organizations is the backup plans that both of them had. Like they double down and then get another greatest player. Mm -hmm. It's like Pitt goes from Lemieux and Yager and Ronnie Francis into Crosby and Malkin years later. And it's like, 
it's like double down and it's like not every organization does that sometimes it's almost like one and done and then you're dying for it for 50 years yeah. and then yeah. edmonton goes from gretzky messier to dry sidle mcdavid <laughs> that's insane it, man it really is, it is. And yeah yeah but, i mean that that's why you could i'm sure compare and contrast and it would be very close well, you I know, think it is very close. Like just looking it would at, have to be. he kind of like tweeted at me some of the rosters, and because I it got me off guard. He's like, "I'm going to ask you this question: like, whose all time roster is better?" I'm mm-hmm. like, "All right, well, do you have?" You know, I was asking like, "Who does Paul Coffey play for?" I was going to say probably both, both teams. Well, he's, like, he's on both. both. I go, "Well, you can't have both." I go, well, it's a hypothetical he, anyway. He's got he's got to be on both. But he identif- like he probably identifies an more as an oiler, right? We set his records there. But you know, it, it's just quite interesting when you look at it because I think the the history of them is pretty close. I think Pittsburgh did they come in around the same time or was it after? Or yeah, I, I yeah, it would have been. Uh, I think around seventy nine, eighty. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. They probably they might have come in at literally the same time. And yeah. you know, Gretzky got there in seventy nine, and Lemieux was drafted in eighty four. I believe so they're you know five years apart and yeah the Oilers you know that's the crazy thing like we forget this and understandably because it's been so long we're talking about the Canadian Cup drought and we'll see what happens in the next two and a half weeks it could finally come to an end but just prior to it starting Canada owned the Stanley Cup for a decade yeah the Islanders won four straight and then it went Edmonton, Edmonton, Montreal, Edmonton, Edmonton, Calgary, Edmonton, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Montreal. So like the Lemieux back to back in ninety one, ninety two, that's a that's a ten season run where it was eight Canadians, eight Canadian teams won the cup. Like yeah. and then Vancouver went to the cup final in ninety four, right? And lost in game seven. Yeah. Like that that could have been just a historical run. It was, I mean, for Canadian teams to say nothing of prior to the Islanders winning, the Habs won, I think, four in a row, right? right. I believe they won in the late 70s. So there was like a 15-year run there where the Canadian teams ran the show. There are only 21 teams in the league. But um, it just yeah. speaks to how crazy it really has been for 30 years. And, you know, Edmonton's on the way down today, and you guys are going to give us your, your keys to victory here, right? I think, yeah. oh, you're doing Florida. Noodles, you're going to do Edmonton. I'm going to mediate this thing, and I'll yeah. chime in here or there. Um, but that's, you know, a sign of where we're going here. We're getting closer. And I'm curious if in your keys to the game, Noodles, or, oh, you're going to reference the fact that Drake – has uh, reportedly hammered the Oilers to win the cup. That's the kiss of death right there. Why do you I, think these guys like him and Mayweather money. like it, why do they why do they do this and it goes public? Is it attention. just for the juice? Is it for the attention? I'm guessing he's got ownership in the in the product in the the site would be my guess. I don't, I don't know that, but he bets at the same place. I don't remember what it is, but he always. So it's posts. just publicity for the site. That basically. would be my assumption. I mean, that doesn't mean he's not putting the money down. I'm, I'm sure he's putting his money down, but uh, it's not like this guy's, you know, jumping from site to site for the best line, right? Like as far yeah. as I know, this guy's not going FanDuel, DraftKings, Caesar, you know, BetMGM. He's not jumping around. It's the same betting company that he uses every single time, and I don't think he's doing anything for free you know it's it's either he owns a piece or he's endorsing it and making money off it um but he does he does put big big money yes on a lot of different events and i guess what did he put noodles 500 grand 500k 500 on the oilers paying plus money too he's getting plus money on that so I there just, you go. Drake's like, on the Oilers. What do you make of it? Drake's it every the time Oilers. this guy's around a team, they just take a dump. So Generally. I don't outside of the Raptors when he was hanging around them, but now he's not anywhere near them right now because they're not on the winning side. Mm-hmm. But I like this guy is the kiss of death, isn't he? You don't he, want him. He has near been historically. Team. Now he has won bets, right? Like he posts bets, and then obviously he is he has won a number of them. I can't reference any right now, but I know he is he has put money on different teams, different fighters in the past. Do you think he researches it, or like, do you think he has a team to say, let's dive into this, or he just says, he gets hammered one night and says, I'm dropping a ton on this? I could see both, couldn't you? I yeah. mean, with that kind of money, you would you would think he'd have some insight. You know, not him personally, but he would ask someone. So there's a capper out there that's saying, hey, this is value. This is a good play. 
but he's also got so much money that yeah. five hundred grand to him is nothing. It's not. It's like not it's, a ton. It's no. nothing to him. He makes that in a day off streaming on Apple and Spotify. You know, the amount of cash that guy pulls in all the time. He puts a new song out. The guy's making millions. So uh, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised, though, if he just said, screw it. You know, I'm, I'm just going to hammer the Oilers. And it's not a bad bet. You know what I mean? I, I, I actually think betting the Oilers at plus money is probably the smarter bet. You don't have to pay a ton of juice on the, on the Panthers. I have said I think the Panthers are going to win, but I, I don't feel great about that bet. I could absolutely see the Oilers winning this. And if you think it's a coin flip, you probably take the odds, right? Like on FanDuel, you're getting plus, what, plus 118 or something to win the series. That's pretty good odds yeah. uh, for a team that, that's humming right now. It's got the best player in the world, and I don't know. They, I, I, we'll see it, what happens. It, it just this guy, you know, every time this guy's around, it's, it's a – it's not a good thing for the team he's cheering Generally. For. Although That's the Oilers aren't, you know, as to my knowledge, he's not flying to Florida and then to Edmonton. I don't think he's traveling with no, the Cup. I know, like, but he's not going to be around the team. Remember when the Leafs were kind of rolling and all of a sudden this guy was in a luxury box with a Leaf jersey on and people were losing their minds going, get the hell out of here? Like, <laughs> I don't like, remember the reaction. I remember that it. was in the playoffs early on. People are like, get out of here. You, okay. You know, like, I maybe I'm wrong. I, d- I, I don't I, remember people reacting that way. I, I mean, he's been going to Leaf games forever. He is from Toronto. It's not like I, the guy is, I you know, from that. Paris or something no, and flies no, no. over to bother I just, people. I think there was like, I feel like for a two-day period or a three-day period, people are like, the Drake curse, this guy's got a, a jersey. Isn't that what it's called, the Drake curse? Well, it was, but again, he is the ambassador in the face of the Raptors in many ways, and it wasn't a curse for them. You yeah. know, I, I, it was for a long time. Whoever he was on board with, whoever he was rooting for, if you saw him in one of their jerseys, it was like, these guys are skunked. And I would bet speaking, money that, that was he happening. phases out as the ambassador. How many times did you see him last year? <laughs> I didn't I did. see him a lot. He was it was not out, a lot, man. Yeah. Well, well exactly. Like, if, if they're going to win 25 games, yeah, I don't, I don't sure you know, Darko, I don't know if he's got a relationship with him. He loved Nick Nurse. He's obviously close with Masai. Those seats are going to be available to him whenever he wants them. Like that's yeah. probably a lifetime license, I would my, think. My my more my question. Remember, is it Nav the guy who's gone to every game, every single dealer? game? Yeah. I wonder he's when not he stopping. starts. To, Dude, I was just you know going to say, I wonder when that guy was? puts his hand up for check, please. Never, like never, re- never, really. Do you know how bad this team was at times <laughs> for the first? Like they were You're horrendous, right. <laughs> and this guy showed up. That's you know, true. like they were horrendous. Yeah. And yeah. he would show up. Kevin O'Neill swearing on the sideline. They're trying to win 68 65. Games yeah. are brutal. No talent, no hope, no, yeah. no, no anything. And Nav's in there. Hey, all right, let's go. <laughs> like, Nav is a true fan, man. <laughs> I got to give him props. You, you got to give that be. guy a ton of love because he does not miss anything. It doesn't matter how bad they are. There, there yeah. could be no one else in the building. Yeah. He's going to be in there. Yeah, um, for him. yeah, yeah he's right. he's a, he's a true <laughs> true supporter and loyal fan. Yeah. Um, all right, Ryan Smith coming up. We got Stephen Caldwell. There's a lot of stuff going on with the national team, right? We're getting close to Copa America. They're going to play Argentina. Uh, friendlies going on right now. Tune up games. We'll catch up with Caldwell. CFL starting tonight. Like we said, Winnipeg, Montreal. We got the nail gun on to to tee that up. Derek Dreger today, Ryan Smith today. we got a lot, including game one of the NBA Finals. So all of that and more still to come. You guys are going to list off your keys to victory as well yeah. for Florida and for Edmonton. I'll be right in the middle of that. Uh, it's going to be a fun one this afternoon. We're off and running. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Noodles, uh, there he is. I don't know where Noodles was, the countryside there for a moment. Uh, Jason just sent a picture of Noodles with the Islanders. You had the mullet going back in I did. the early 90s, too. It was glorious. I had a pretty good pretty That was good That's mullet. like a legit mullet. Like, you, you had you had the puffy hair and a Business serious Business on top mullet. and rat, multiple rat tails on back. <laughs> yeah. I had long hair, and you're right, side trimmed, and then... Like, a, a, I think it was kind of a feather, like the feather on top, but maybe a little bit of a side part. Like, it I was like it. it was poofy, Commitment. though. There was, no, yeah. there was no gel. It was dry grip back then. You just... Dry you, grip. Remember I Remember the love dry it. grip for the... Uh, oh, yeah. And, Hazy, <laughs> you mentioned off the top, you claim that 41 
is basically the most useless birthday out there. Mm -hmm. If you've got one that's more useless, hit us with it because yeah. I think you'll have a tough time. I like think it's 41 the is useless. the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. It's just – I have big. a tough time even saying happy birthday. Like I know I love I love you like a brother, and it's it's forty one. No, it's like you, why? It's, it's like just why? nothing. It really, yeah. I, I have wow. I'm self aware. Like I understand it. Forty's a big one, big one, yeah. and it's like all right, we'll get back to you in a few years. You know yeah. what I mean? Fifty's a big one. Like my brother's turning fifty, huge next year, and I'm taking him golfing, mm -hmm. and I don't even care. Well, the year after is my fiftieth. You talk about ta I'm taking a week. I'm taking a week to myself. I'm gonna, yeah. I, it's my 50th birthday. Yeah, just, I'm like I'm going it, to man. Pebble Beach. I'm going to play Spyglass. Mm -hmm. I'm going down to L.A. and I don't even care what I miss or what happens because it's my 50th birthday. You only get it's actually a useful birthday. 50 is a big one. Yeah. yeah. Again, I think you know when you're a kid, every year is big. I think in your 20s, it's big because you're still young and you're partying. You know, you're looking for reasons for everyone to get together. In your 30s, you're still young enough where you can get a crowd together. You know what I mean? I can't – I'm not reaching out to people saying, hey, I'm turning 41 tonight. Anyone want to grab a beer? Yeah, They're like, absolutely not. I'd write not. back and say I'm not – no, I don't. Not interested. No. And, no. and actually, I rescind my happy birthday from earlier because you asked me <laughs> to get together yeah. for a pint. No, it's 41 not, not it's it you useless. know what just another year on the calendar <laughs> it's but just a you useless know what? birthday i found out before the last break we have a a fellow tsn person that shares a birthday with you farhan Logi. yes farhan i love it so shout out shout to out to now, farhan he'll be jacked with the 41. cfl back tonight I don't think he's 41, though. He might have a few years on you. He looks like a million bucks, though, man. He I, he's, I remember he's, he's a stud, yeah. and he hasn't changed in 20 years. Well, because yeah. he works out. I remember we saw him at um, – we were down yeah, at the Royal you York. grab remember? a workout with him? No, I wasn't working out. Dude, I was in, I was in prime griff. Mo, this was this was twelve years ago or this whatever. Is when they brought the horse into the lobby. That's when we were doing the show at the Royal York with the horse, <laughs> and I saw Farhan. He had a huge sweat on. He was at the gym. He looked like a million bucks. He's running up yeah. and down the stairs. I'm like, that's a guy who's committed. That's a guy that in front of a screen yeah. that looks great and feels great. Um, and I wasn't, but yeah, he he'll be jacked with the CFL tonight. You see a lot of stuff going on out there. Like, what's up with Zadorov? What's up with Lindholm? And now Zadorov's agent came out and pounced on a report that maybe Zadorov and the Canucks were working on a deal, and he said, fake news. Yeah, I love Milstein. Dan just Milstein. Like, now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Milstein's just like, nope, fake news. Right off the top rope, too. Like, right. that's, Milstein. Like, I Not think, happening. Yeah, like Ian McIntyre, who's you know reputable guy yeah. out there, and uh, just – like quote t quote tweets it fake news like just flat sky out dunk, like all <laughs> over the tweet <laughs> that is a sky d all he's doing is saying hey I'm hearing there's some rumblings maybe there's some talks going on mm -hmm. fake news right from the horse's mouth basically right. because Milstein would be the guy doing that that's a tough one but that's he doesn't tough. represent Lindholm I don't believe like he, he represents Zadorov he, he could I I don't know that but I I thought he only represented Zadorov. So, you know, maybe Lynn Holmes. It's just Lindholm crazy, though, how, like, some Canadian, like, it's like isolated players' contracts blow up into this thing. Like, Zadorov's a good player, but why is his contract turning into, like, TMZ type mm -hmm. of material? I don't get it. It is uniquely it's, Canadian. It is uniquely yeah. Canadian where it's like if the Canucks find a way to sign him, it became popular. I wouldn't overpay the guy. There was rumblings of six sheets a year. I'm not paying Zadorov that. No. If he gets yeah. it, good for him. Mm -hmm. That's good work by his agent. But it's like it just seems to blow up into this big thing. And I don't know if that's good or bad for the player. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Lindholm's agent, I think, is Craig Oster. So that's that's uh, Newport Sports. So okay. it would just be it would be, you know, Milstein coming off the top rope about Zadorov. And I don't know. Like he is. He became what it is. He became a folk hero in the playoffs for the mm. Canucks because he played so well. He was physical. But again, is that is that two month stretch worth an it's overpayment? A dangerous game, Jamie. If you want to fall in love with a guy that had a stretch and played offensively, now, I guess you could say it was outside of his comfort zone because he's never been that guy his whole career. And I'm not taking a dump on the player. I like the player. I like the personality. He wears nice suits. He looks good. He plays good. But if you want to fall in love with that and overreact to that, that's bad business. 
Well, he, Very simple. It, it depends on where you slot him. Like, if you sign him and whatever you sign him for and he falls in on a third pairing, maybe kisses up on a second pairing, that means you've got something good going on in front of him and he slots exactly. properly. Like, that, if, you know, it would be dangerous if a team signs him thinking that he's a top pairing guy. Because I just, you know, I like the player as well, too. I, I think he's a guy who can hit, fight, move the puck. He's mm-hmm. got a big personality. But, you know, he he is limited as far as top pairing. I think he can get into a second pairing, but for sure a third pairing, a five type of thing. Yes. And, and be a hell of a player. But what does that look like? But if, you, if, you're, if there's a chance you're going to be on the third pair, you can't pay that more than like $3 million. Four million. Yeah. Like really, yeah, unless you yeah. have an incredibly balanced lineup. Yeah. But if you envision him being a part of your third pair at any point at in the next couple of years, no you, way. You, you can't. I mean you, yeah. you simply can't do that. But that's what bad teams do before we get to our next yes. guest. They think that oh, maybe this guy's a second pairing guy at six sheets and he's gonna turn things around. And we saw it with Mike Commissaric. That's not what they are. Mm-hmm. And you get screwed. Yeah. It's bad business. That's right. Uh, Ryan Smith coming up. Dave Naylor, CFL season start tonight in the NBA Finals. Finally here. Dallas at Boston. The Mavs getting about six and a half on FanDuel going into the game tonight. To tee it up, we're joined now by ESPN NBA insider. Uh, here's Bobby Marks. How you doing, Bobby? I'm good, guys. How we doing? We're doing well. We're jacked for tonight. It feels like it's been an eternity since we had a ball game. And I'm curious if you think that benefits either team or what do you make of Mavs, Celts, healthy and having a lot yeah. of time to prepare yeah i mean I, I mean i just look back on uh you know back a long time ago in, in new jersey we had a long long layover and then got our doors blown off in game <laughs> one so i don't know i mean i guess you know certainly luca was um you know certainly nicked up in that um in that in that minnesota series here i think um, I think Boston has, you know, certainly benefited. We saw them come out of the gate pretty fast in, in game one in Indiana. I know Indiana came back at the end. Um, Miami in, in, the, in the first round, you know, the, you know, the second round, um, you know, with Cleveland, you know, that was a pretty big blowout there. So um, I think it's probably maybe a little more nerves than anything than with, maybe with uh, Russ, even if, you know, even with, Kyrie having been there, you know, a while ago, and, and certainly with, with Tatum and Brown a couple of years ago here. So, well, yeah, one thing for sure, both teams will be definitely well rested. Bobby, somebody on this show thinks, regardless of what happens in this final, that's going to be LeBron being the face of the NBA, no matter what. Him, KD, Steph Curry, like if Lucas dominant gets the ring or Tatum, and there's Anthony Edwards, do you think it's an opportunity for someone to jump up and be the face of the NBA? Or like the guy on this show, is it always going to be LeBron? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good... <laughs> I think it's always going to be LeBron and Curry and KD until those guys retire. <laughs> you sure, Bobby? Be sure. Let's you, think Bobby. about it. You're Bobby, let's man, think about Bobby. it. Let's take a step back and think about no, it. No, don't take They're a step not back. winning. <laughs> They're not winning anymore. They're just I, so I overpopular. So explain your answer, I know. please. I, I just look at today's news cycle. I mean, we're talking, we've got game one of a great final tonight, and we're talking about the Lakers are in the news cycle because of Dan Hurley and LeBron, and is it the right fit, and did Le- is LeBron making the hire and everything. So I don't know if it's more about on the court um, as far as these guys being the face. You know, certainly Car- uh, what Curry's been able to do, but it just seems like there's always a storyline with uh, with one of these players. But, no, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I think that the face of the NBA, whether it be Luka or uh, – or Jokic, or Anthony Edwards, or the young kids in Oklahoma City. I think those are the new. You know, those are that is the wave, right? That is, you know, Tatum and Brown. You know, same thing. You know, if those guys win a championship here, you, know, you could say Jason Tatum is MVP. He could be the face of the uh, the face of the league. But as I said, like until these guys are gone for good, especially LeBron. I mean, LeBron will be the you know cont- will continue to be the face even even when they lose in the first round or maybe they don't make the playoffs. Is this guy calculated, Bobby? It seems like he's at, he's out of the spotlight, and then at the moment, just as you said, the finals are starting, and and I know it's not about him; it's about coaching. But it just his name pops up, and he's in that news cycle. It just and Rich Paul has said in the past where it's like this guy's in the cycle twenty four seven. It's different than in the but he puts himself in there. Is it calculated on his camp? 
Yeah, no, poor Kyrie Irving, right? I mean, that's probably the last thing he wanted to be answering about, you know, LeBron questions about, you know, him him and you know, LeBron and JJ Reddick do this podcast and how he misses LeBron, how he misses Kyrie and he's the best teammate and all this stuff. And then you're answering that going into game one. And that's all, yeah, I mean, that's all we're talking about here. Um, and then, you know, he can deny all he wants. And as far as the, the coaching search here, I think if you're, you know, you're the front office, you're at least kind of running it by the player as far as who that that coach could be here so yeah it is it is interesting and then we'll go through it again in a couple of weeks when we get closer to the draft you know certainly with with his son and we've we've heard you know as far as the, the unwillingness to sign a two-way contract if he's drafted and that's certainly coming from his agent here so yeah it's uh, and then his contract too you know he could become a free agent so yeah well we're, i would expect you know i would prepare yourself to get a full dose of lebron in the next month here yeah, and uh, it's it's just not going to stop. I mean, it's not going to stop as long as he's playing. And even once he's done playing, he's going to transition likely into ownership. He'll be, you know, be it'll be Mark Cuban. He'll be on the sideline. No, it'll just, never stop. I think yeah. LeBron's around forever, Bobby. Yes. Like, and I, I don't think that's a bad thing for the NBA, but I don't think this guy ever disappears for the next 40 years. What, what do you think? No, I mean, I, I mean, I agree. I mean, especially if his son plays in the league for ten years, and we'll see where that goes. Or we get a, we get an expansion team in Vegas or Seattle or one of these places, and he becomes a part owner, and now he's running the show. Yeah, I think he's going to be around here for a long time. Bobby, right. you just talked about it. His son, like where, where do you think he should be drafted? Where do you think he will go? I mean, is he? Do you believe he has a future to be an NBA player? Or is it just so much pressure on him? What do you make of the whole situation? I don't think he's a first round talent. I, I, I mean, I would be stunned if the Lakers at seventeen or Phoenix at twenty two, and some of the I, he's not he's not a first, he's not a first round grade. Now that doesn't mean he's not going to get drafted. I mean, I think if you're a team that's you know where, where the Lakers are at fifty five, yeah. I mean, if you want to take a flyer and hopefully that it's a developmental project two years from now, I would be stunned him getting on the court next year in an NBA game. I think you would certainly see him a lot in the G League here. So, um, but he's you know he's a six one and a half two guard. He's not a point guard. And I think his 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 identity will be defend, you know, the ability to defend here. But how many positions can he guard? I mean, you ask him how many people can you guard two? And you like to have guard, guys that can guard, you know, three or four positions here. And I think he's got to develop a consistent shot. Um, but I do think he's draftable. I think he's helped himself over the last month, whether it be at the combine or in his individual workouts here. And I think I think it's just a matter of it's kind of like an upside pick here that you're going to get hopefully something pretty decent, you know, two years from now. But I would be listen. I'm doing draft coverage tonight, and um, you know, and on that, that Wednesday night, and I will go full in if some team drafts this guy in the first round here. And it's nothing against nothing against Bronny. It's just against you know you can find better value as far as someone who can help you right now. With Bobby Marks of uh, ESPN. So, Bronny and LeBron will not be playing tonight, as we've established. It is it is Dallas <laughs> and Boston. And, obviously, Luka's been great. You know, Tatum's done what he's been doing all year. Kyrie Irving versus Jalen Brown. Like, is the, in terms of the, the quote-unquote number two guys, how significant is that battle, and who do you see winning that battle? Yeah, I mean, you can even make a case, you know, that Jalen's been a number one. Um, he was certainly number one in the Indiana series. I thought, you know, you know, it's a shame he didn't, you know, he didn't make all M- uh, all one of the all NBA teams. I had him. You know, Tim our, Tim Bontemps, our, our colleague, does a straw poll, and I had him a, a fifth in the, in the MVP race towards the end of the year. Kind of he make all NBA here. So yeah, I think that's it, that is certainly an intriguing storyline as far as those two. As far as um, you know, if, if Luca and, and Tatum kind of neutralize each other, kind of one of those, you know, will certainly have. Um, would have to give them their team an, an advantage here. I think I would certainly probably lean more towards probably Jalen Brown. Um, I think you know, it's, you, you guys know, it's all about you kind of like the X factor guy. Like, is it Derek Jones Jr. in Dallas? Is it Porzingis? The return of Kristaps Porzingis, and where is he? Not really health wise, but we haven't seen him since Game Three of that Miami series, which was in um, which was in late April here. So, I think it's going to be a terrific series. I picked Dallas in six. I'm staying with it. Um, you know, I think I think Dallas has shown enough that they can go out and win a you know win, go out and steal game uh, game one tonight. 
Well, that would be significant. I mean, I, I like where your head's at because, you know, I like the idea of Luca. Like we've been talking about, we're joking, face of the league and all that kind of stuff. But he is he is in machine mode. I mean, it's a guy who put up 70, and he's obviously always been a, a great scorer. He's been a triple-double machine. There were, there, there were, you know, people worried, is he in shape? Is he committed enough? He went away for a little bit too, Hazy, after the bubble. He was so good, and then it was like it, it fell off a little bit. Yeah, and even well, you, last you know year. It's gonna, you know it's going to be the key, and you guys will you, you, you watch enough of him, how he can handle his emotions. How, if he can keep his emotions in check and he's not complaining about calls and whining like we see a lot in these games here, you know, he is as good as any, any NBA player on here. But if that comes into play tonight, um, you know, then that that's gonna that's gonna hold this team back. Yeah, although that emotion, like we we yeah. loved it in the last round when he was going at guys, <laughs> right? Like I hear what and you're saying about the can't, refs com- can't stop. No, no you know what? Sometimes it's more about it's more about you know him on offense not getting a call and then not running back on the other end of the court. You right. know, that's where he's usually he's complaining. But yeah, I mean, so I, and I think. I think he needs to play like that, you know. I mean, I think he, I think he thrives off that when he feel, kind of feels like he's the villain a little bit here. Absolutely, with Bobby Marks, you mentioned you're you're prepping for the draft. You know, the Raptors. We know what happened in the lottery in San Antonio. San Antonio is going to get that pick, and they're working out Zach Eady. Eady's a local yeah. guy. You know, they they have Pirtle still. Like, can you make sense of that if they draft Eady? How do you? How would you explain that with Pirtle here? Like, how were the two mixed? What does that say about Pirtle and the the future of the Raptors and what their plans could be? Yeah, it's usually the the guy that you draft is going to be their long <laughs> the guy that you have at the starter position, unless mm-hmm. he's somewhat part of your long term future here. And I think I think that's kind of how you look at it here, as far as when when you if it's Edie and. And I think you do need another big and you need some rebounding help. It's not really, hey, can these two guys play together or what happens with, with Perno? I think it's more of kind of, you know, hopefully that's the repl- an inexpensive replacement um, two, or two or three years, and maybe that gives you some options as far as, you know, to move off Jakob if, uh, if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, this draft we keep hearing, and obviously you would know it, Bobby. I'm sure I've read and heard you say it. Like, it's not – not a ton of talent, but there's always diamonds in the rough, right? Like it's, there's, uh, yeah. there's going to be guys be, here that pop. I, I, I would be more comfortable at 19 than I would have at, than I would be at eight <laughs> right now. If I was working for a team, mm-hmm. I think you can get someone who's, you know, a three or four year guy. You can get a guy that can come in and play right now. And maybe he's not never going to be an all-star, but I think, you know, the top eight, top nine scares you because, you know, usually you're drafting, you're coming off a really poor season and you're looking for immediate help or for that, you know, that potential, you know, all-star, you know, two or three years from now. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, we're looking forward to the draft up here. We're looking forward to game one of the uh, NBA Finals. Enjoy it, Bobby. Thank you for doing this. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Talk you got to it. You. Bobby Marks of ESPN. And... um you know, looking at the the money coming in, FanDuel on FanDuel, eighty six percent of the bets coming in on Dallas, and uh, yeah, a lot of cash, a lot of cash on Dallas coming in. So, Bobby likes the Mavs too. I mean, wow. that, that'd be a cool story, right? To see Luca, Kyrie, or I don't know about Kyrie. You know, everyone like people are treating Kyrie as if it's some big redemption tour. You know, we discussed it last week. He just he isn't talking or saying anything. Yeah. He's just playing well, they ball. They hate his guts there, don't they? They hate him in Boston. Oh, dude, remember he was burning <laughs> stuff on the sidelines yeah. when he played? Yeah. Well, Seriously. remember he stomped on the you know center court logo? And, um, yeah, he was he, quite out to lunch there, though. He well, was like, he was very good for them. but And then he said on the record multiple times, like, I love it here. I'm going to stay. And then he bolted. You know, and right. that that's what people held against him was that he was – telling the media you know yeah we're gonna work it out i'm gonna be here i'm a fan i love boston blah 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 and then actually i'm not you know i'm gonna be going somewhere else actually it was in it was in brooklyn where he was out to lunch wasn't yeah brooklyn it? he was, he was out to lunch stupid. boston Remember? he was yeah just that's doing right his uh, thing. you're right I mean, like it was brooklyn where he was on he, he wasn't playing he was on a zoom call remember yes. he was like uh, yeah that yeah remember he was, he, yeah he was at and he was at some party for like his sister <laughs> while the game was going on it was on yeah. in the background and people had video of him yeah yeah ridiculous. it was it was strange um that's right anyway we'll we'll see game one tonight
All right, Ryan Smith in about 20. The CFL kicking off tonight. Dave Naylor will join us to set the scene on that. Where do the Argos go from here without Chad Kelly? You know, they, they were coming in likely as favorites in the East, but Kelly's out for a minimum nine games, if not more than that. And there's been a lot of turnover with the Argos as well. So we'll set the scene on the season with the nail gun and continue to look ahead to uh, game one of the cup final on Saturday night. The Jays with a win today, win last night, they get a split. After all that, they get a split against the Orioles. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. Well, we talked about LeBron entering the news cycle. Sometimes the Maple Leafs just out of the blue jump into the news cycle. Bobby Stoffer out in Edmonton off the oh, top turnbuckle. I saw that. Tweeted this. The last three playoff seasons, Zach Hyman, 28 game or 46 games played, 28 goals. This is just out of the blue. Random. <laughs> Maple Leafs, in quotations, core four, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Tavares. Games played, 95, goals, 34. Ends the tweet with, at Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> it's just like, I don't know why you Does he work that. for the team? I'm I, not... I think he does, yeah. Okay, so there you yeah. go. But, but, right. but, but why, like, what has that got to do with, like, just, I don't know. Listen, I know Bobby Littles. well. I like I it. Just, I love Bobby. I don't I, like that. I, just, I don't like that. Though. This I'll is random on a, what is it, Thursday afternoon, and he comes off the top turnbuckle <laughs> with the flying elbow and just drops it right on, I, right on the fellas. But, but I love it. Like, it's, 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 why, it's, though? Why, like, I, listen, I, don't I, know. I know Bobby I just, some, well. We, we, you know, we stay in touch. He's a good guy, and we're friends. But I just don't know. Like, I don't know if he's sitting there going, hey, I got a little kill, a little, little time. I'm just going to take a shot. Like, why? Like, you want to do Winnipeg next? You're going to do Vancouver? You know, like, what do you? Well, he, I don't he know. knows the reaction that will come. I this know, is Chris Cote just... down in Miami. Greg this Cote. Is, or Greg Cote. <laughs> Chris Cote. Doing <laughs> the same thing. Bob Stoffer is yeah. Greg Cote. Cote is Bob Stoffer In Edmonton, he knows it's going to work. And it's factual. I did not see that. What I think might be lost here is that what this really says is that the Leafs just live rent-free in everyone's head around the country. The Oilers are in the cup final. Why does it matter what the Leafs are doing? That's kind like of that, what I understand. That's what I don't understand. Point. Like, if, if this was, you know, in the summer and it's over and, hey, I just stumbled across something, I, hey, that's kind of interesting. Why do the Leafs have anything to do with preparing for a cup final that the Oilers are playing in? Like, Trolling on the Maple Leafs front office or Leaf fans, I don't know. I just I this is one where I don't see it going the other way. Like I don't see Leaf if the Leafs were ever in a Cup final, I don't think they'd be like, maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I probably am. There probably would be some sort of hey, look at this compared to McDavid. Probably would actually happen. Yeah. But maybe it, it's just fan bases and and I don't know. Well, like, it's going to get reaction. It's going to get clicks. And and listen, it's pumping the tires of Hyman. Hyman's been unbelievable. Like just, he's been an unbelievable oiler. He's Since a greater he oiler foot in Edmonton than he ever was a Leaf. He was a very good Leaf. He was a great Leaf, but he yeah. will be remembered as an oiler the rest of his life, and especially if they win four more games, right? He'll come back. He'll put the Leaf alumni jacket on, and he'll be wearing an Edmonton Oilers cup ring. That will be a troll job enough. Forget the statistics, but this is where, you know, we always say people in Toronto, we're not. No one's worried about what's going. on in the rest of the country you're worried about toronto for some reason and this yeah. seems like another example of that what what do the leafs have to do with preparing for a cup final i can't quite understand that. That, you know Can you answer it, it that for me i don't know i don't think it, it has anything to do with it to be honest that's the thing like it, it just i don't know why it's a you, random you pop do shot that. i don't know I but it's, like a little, like the, it's a little it's a little jab it's a good but, one but the, the hey, other it's a good way one. guys the other way to me uh, maybe and correct me if I'm wrong, is just when you're enjoying success or whatever right now. Now they haven't closed the deal. Like they, you know, if if they end up losing, yes, they had a great run. They had, you know, this team is still in good shape, looks fine. But it, you know, it just all it does is open you up for, hey, you know what, you didn't get it done or whatever. Like I and and to me, the the greatest, I think, chirp is the non chirp. Not even worried about you. You know what I mean? Like if 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 somebody said, "Well, Hyman in in, in Toronto," he'd be like, "Doesn't matter. Hyman doesn't play for Toronto anymore." Mm -hmm. like, like to me, the greatest chirp is pretending that that they don't exist. 
Like for well, in, they, in his they mind, don't. the Leafs don't exist. There's two exist teams right now. that exist. That's like what again, I, mean. I can understand if the Oilers were out. You yeah. know, if this was Dallas playing Florida, and you're looking for content this time of year, that's a that's a very reasonable yeah. tweet. You like, I couldn't imagine covering a Cup final <laughs> of the team that I I work for. I cover, like the the abundance of content and yeah. preparation. And the idea that a Maple Leaf shrapnel shot is a part of it. I, <laughs> yeah, I, this one will probably get retweeted more than anything else during the Cup Let's final. have a look where it's at now, Doogie, and then see where it's I, at at the end you know, of the show. Which, I'm again, to... will not be something – it won't look good. if at, at, Let's say they win the Cup and Bob tweets out, Oilers win the Cup and the Leaf <laughs> tweet has more tweets <laughs> and more reactions. Yeah. And we got to find we got to find the tweet though. I just lost it. There's a tweet saying Ken Holland deserves some some love here and yeah. it showed the roster that he took over from and it was Drysaddle McDavid and then it just like it dropped like mm-hmm. it was Zach Cassian was on the top line with them. And then it, Lucic was on the left wing. Like, I've got to find that tweet. I'll get okay. it to Doogie. We can post it to see what that team looked like when Holland took over co- compared to what it looks like now. Okay. I love it. All right. Yeah. Look at us. We're talking about the cup final. Well, exactly. that's, what, that's what we operate. We're yeah, all about exactly. the Oilers and the Panthers in the cup final. Go Oilers. Yeah. Go Oilers. Uh, hour two coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2.